Let's create a PowerPoint presentation. This is what you see when you first open PowerPoint 2013. You can open an existing presentation over here, or create a new one from a template. Since this is our first time, let's start with a blank presentation. This area over here is the slide pane where you choose the slide you want to work on. And this is where you work on it. By default, PowerPoint adds a blank title slide when you first start. This area up here is called the ribbon, which contains the tools for creating your slides and slideshow. Where do we start? Well, how about here where it says click to add title? PowerPoint uses placeholders like this to suggest what to do. Well, that's it. The first slide is finished. Now to add the next slide, we'll come up here to the ribbon. These buttons at the top are called tabs. When you click a tab, you see the commands and options that are associated with that tab. And on the Home tab, there's a group of commands related to slides, including New Slide. This time, PowerPoint adds a slide with a different layout of placeholders. Type your slide title at the top, then type a list of the things you want to talk about. PowerPoint automatically formats the text as bullets. Before we add more slides, let's move down to the status bar and click this button to open the notes pane. Here you can add notes to use during your presentation. If you need more room, hold the mouse over the border until you see a double-headed arrow, then drag the border up. It's usually considered a best practice to keep the amount of text on your slide to a minimum and fill in all the details with your talk. Don't worry, the audience can't see the notes. They're just for your reference. We'll get into the ways to use PowerPoint during your presentation later. Up next, let's save the presentation file and move on. Probably the most important part of creating a presentation, other than writing it, of course, is saving it. For example, if the power were to go out right now, all of our hard work would be gone unless we'd saved it to a file. Here's an easy way to do that. Move up here to this set of commands called the Quick Access Toolbar and click Save. The first time you save a presentation, you come to this area called the Backstage. You won't find any formatting commands here. The Backstage is all about opening, saving, printing, sharing, exporting, and modifying PowerPoint options. In other words, all that behind the scenes stuff. Save As is selected when you first save a presentation. Here, you choose whether you want to save it to your computer or to the cloud using Office 365 or OneDrive. I've already signed into my online account, so now I can click here and browse for a location on my OneDrive. Enter a file name and click Save. It's just like saving to a computer, except that now I can access the file on any computer connected to the Internet. Or I can share it with others by sending an email message containing a link to the online file. After you save your presentation, you can keep working on it if you want, but remember to save it often so you don't lose any new work. If you want to print your presentation, click the File tab to go to the Backstage and click Print. You can see a preview of how it will look after it's printed. Select a printer here, then click Print. However, before we do any printing, we need to finish the slides. Up next, we'll insert some things in the presentation. For the next slide, we want a slightly different layout. Click the arrow inside New Slide, and you get a gallery of layout options. Let's choose To Content. We'll add a title here, and add text in the placeholder on the left. On the right, let's add a picture. And the easiest way to do that is to click this Pictures icon. You can see what an icon does by holding the mouse over it. There are also icons for inserting a table, chart, a smart art graphic, video, or online pictures. Look through your folders, then select a picture and click Insert. PowerPoint automatically sizes and positions the picture in the placeholder, but you can change it if you want. To help you align the picture, click the View tab and add grid lines and guides. Then with the picture selected, Click and drag one of the corner handles to change the size. 
Hold the mouse over the picture until you see a four-headed move cursor, and then you can move the picture. These guidelines appear when an edge of the picture is aligned perfectly with another element. Also, did you notice that a new tab appeared on the ribbon? Whenever you select an element on the slide, a context tab appears with a special set of commands and options for whatever you've selected. In this case, a picture. For example, you can align or rotate the picture, change the color of the picture, hold the mouse over an option to see a preview, or click the Picture Styles More button and choose a frame. Then click to select one. When you click away from the picture, the Context tab goes away. To find more things to insert, check out the Insert tab. How about a shape? There are rectangles, arrows, callouts. Click Header and Footer to add things like a date and numbers to your slides. This one is useful. Click Screenshot, then Screen Clipping. Then you can clip out something on your screen, like a web page. Up next, we'll finalize everything and get ready for our live presentation. Our slideshow is almost done, but before we let the audience see it, we need to do something about the design. Click the Design tab, then click the Themes Gallery. Hold the mouse over a theme to see a preview. A theme changes the entire look of your slides by applying a professional design. It standardizes the fonts, the colors, the effects, the positioning of elements, even the background images. You can even create your own theme and save it. Let's choose this slide design. Each theme also comes with a set of variants. We added our theme last, but you could just as easily apply a theme when you first start and change it later if you want. One more thing you may want to add is a watermark or image that appears on all of your slides. Click Format Background and Picture or Texture Fill. Then click File. Locate a picture on your computer and click Insert. Drag the transparency slider if you want the picture to look more like a watermark. Then click Apply to All. Click the X to hide the pane. As you work on your presentation, you may want to stop and preview your slideshow. Click the Slideshow tab. Here you'll find the commands and settings related to running your presentation. Click here to run the entire show, or here to run it starting from the current slide. Sometimes when you're laying out a slide, it helps to see what it looks like full screen. Before you call your presentation finished, you can go to the Review tab and click here to run the Spell Checker. This is also where you can add and review comments. For example, you could email the presentation file to others on your team and ask for comments. Then view the comments here. Up next, we'll prepare and run the presentation. There are many options for presenting your slideshow to an audience. But in our case, we're just going to run the presentation from our laptop in a meeting room. We'll plug the meeting room projector into the laptop to make it easy for everyone in the meeting to see the slides. That'll also make it easier for us because with two monitors, we can use Presenter View. Here's how that works. Go to the Slideshow tab and make sure Presenter View is selected. Then click From Beginning to run the slideshow. When you give your presentation, the audience sees the slides on the big screen and you see Presenter View on your laptop. It's like a control panel that displays the current slide, the next slide, your notes, and even a clock. And there are a bunch of options like pins and a laser pointer. If you don't want to use Presenter View, you can just click to change slides or use this toolbar. You can create some pretty flashy presentations with PowerPoint, or you can keep it simple and use the built-in themes and placeholders. Where do you go next? Well, try exploring PowerPoint 2013 on your own. To dig even deeper into PowerPoint features, tools, and workflows, check out the links in the course summary.